Hello, I'm Jacob Stefanko and I'm with Pepperell & Fuchs Technical Support Team. Today I'm going to talk about the new product lineup and show some of the new key features the new Reduction Factor 1 sensor has. The new product lineup includes our Reduction Factor 1 sensors, all with IOLINK compatibility. Enhancements to the Reduction Factor 1 product line include IOLINK standard models for general machinery applications, as well as IOLINK models for automotive weld cell applications. These IOLINK R1 versions add to our already extensive lineup of standard R1 models, which include standard and automotive market versions, as well as high-grade stainless steel models for food and beverage applications. First, a quick refresher on Reduction Factor 1 sensors. As you can see from the slide, standard sensor technology detects different metals at different ranges for a given nominal device. For Reduction Factor 1 sensors, all metals are detected at the same distance. This provides a benefit to customers who need to detect metal targets that have reduction factors, such as aluminum target material. Now we will get into more detail about the configurable IOLINK functions of these inductive sensors. Primarily, there are two configurable switch point modes, near and far. These modes are called setpoint1, or SP1, and setpoint2, or SP2. As well as the range setting capability, the output switching state can be configured as normally open or normally closed. A second detection mode is a window mode of operation, in which the output is only active in the range of SP1 and SP2. In SP2 mode, it is possible to activate a stability alarm that indicates when a target is outside the assured detection range. And finally, there is a pulse extension feature where the output can be extended. For a closer look at switch point mode and the two configurable set point distances, we see the following chart. SP1 is defined as near distance. SP2 is defined as far distance and is the default setting. Outputs can be configured normally opened or normally closed. E2, normally open, is the default configuration. So as example, a single sensor could act as four different models by configuration. The sensor can be configured as near or far distance range. The sensor can be configured as normally open, denoted by E2 on the nomenclature, or closed, denoted by E3 on the nomenclature. Now let's take a look at how the sensor functions while in switch point mode 1. The metal plate approaches the sensor and the yellow LED appears, indicating the output has switched on. The stability alarm will not function when the switch point mode is set to SP1. Now that we understand the possibility to change the sensing distance to a near or far distance, we will discuss the possible activation of a stability alarm. So what is the stability alarm, and how does it function? While the operating switch point mode is in set point 2, or window, the sensor can have a stability alarm activated. In the set point 2 mode, the stability alarm acts as a warning that the activation targeting position is outside the assured operation distance. This does not mean that the sensor will not be triggered, but only acts as a warning that the detection position is not assured. In this mode, the alarm can be used for commissioning and setup verification that the mechanical setup has assured targeting position, or after installation, it can be used as an indication that the targeting position has shifted over time and can be used to trigger a maintenance inspection. Now let's take a look at how the sensor functions while in switch point mode SP2. The metal plate approaches the sensor and the stability alarm is activated. The sensor status LED flashes. The flashing stops and the yellow LED remains solid when the metal passes through the assured distance. So what is the stability alarm, and how does it function when the switch point mode is on window? While in window mode, the stability alarm acts differently than in set point 2 mode. It now acts as a warning that the activation targeting position is close to the sensor face. In this mode, the alarm can be used for setup or applications where the target must stay within a specific zone. The alarm can also be used to indicate the target has the potential to impact the sensor because of mechanical changes. Now let's take a look at how the sensor functions while in switch point mode window. The metal plate approaches the sensor and the yellow LED turns on. As the metal gets closer to the sensor, the stability alarm is active. The sensor status LED now flashes and the IOLINK bit will be active when a target is detected as being too close. The pulse extension feature is the easiest to define as it is a commonly understood feature. 
When pulse extension is activated, the output signal is extended by a time period configured by parameterization. The extension time is added onto what would have been the normal term off position. Pulse extension is activated by selecting the time duration setting 10, 100, or 1000 milliseconds. This results in the output being extended from the time that would have been the normal deactive position. Now let's take a look at how the sensor functions while the pulse extension feature is activated. As the metal plate approaches the sensor and the yellow LED turns on, the metal is pulled back quickly and the LED remains on for one second. That completes the portion of the video, but in closing I would like to review the key features presented today. The sensor has three switch point modes, set point one, set point two, and window. A stability alarm can be separately activated allowing the flashing LED indication. The output can be configured as high active, normally open operation, or as low active, normally closed operation. And lastly, the output signals can be extended to provide an off delay condition. Take note that in general, most features are usable in all the modes. There is one main exception in that the stability alarm has no defined function while in switch point mode SP1. Thank you for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact us and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay tuned for our next video and have a great day.